Okay, so now that we have all of our scans in, what we want to start off doing is erasing all the unnecessary data from these various scans. So we're going to go into our eraser tool. We're going to pick the lasso tool. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a top down view and erase around the plane, click the inverse, and then click erase again. And now we're going to do this through all of our other scans. And we're just going to keep what we do need to align everything. So we're going to keep going through this again. We're highlighting the plane and some of the ground, and then we click inverse, and that just switches it to everything that's around. Since the scanner does collect a large amount of data, as you can see here, we're going all the way around. We've got some other planes that are in the area. We have the hangar. So we really just want to deal with that one small little area. Okay, just a few more here. One last one. Okay, now you'll see that we do have the ground in here in the scan data. That's fine. We're going to get rid of that after we clean up the majority of all the outlying data. All right, and you can use many different tools, but the lasso really is the fastest and then the inverse, which is actually one of my favorite tools here. All right, so you can see the ground is still there. We're going to go back in and once again, one by one, erase the ground. Very easy. This time we're going to use the cutoff plane selection. You just really quickly kind of paint the ground. Just a quick little swipe, and it's going to notice that you can raise and lower it, as you see that I'm doing right now. And just like the previous process, we're just going to keep doing this over and over. And this will make it easier for aligning everything because when you're aligning, you can look at it through various positions and you obviously don't want to be looking through the ground. Okay, just two more. Raise that up just a little bit. All right, last one. Zoom in here so we can get it. Just a quick swipe. Okay. Now that we have everything, let's highlight all of our scans. You'll see here that uh, it's kind of a kind of a little bit of mess, but mesh mess. But now what we're going to do is align them. So when you're aligning, you really only need to select a minimum of three common points on both scans. You want to kind of keep them on separate planes. No pun intended that this is the plane, but in different areas. And you can pick them anywhere as long as they are both on uh, both parts here. OK, we're going to do this last one. All right, we're going to align markers. Good. There we go. All right. Excellent. And we've aligned that. And now we have just a few more to go. I'm going to speed this process up a little bit just so you don't have to watch it the entire time. Um, one thing you are going to see is I purposely made a mistake here um, in the alignment. So you can see that if you do accidentally have an error, See how the wings are kind of off there? Well, you can always go back, figure out where you made that mistake. If you need a couple more points for um, alignment, there you go. Cleans it right back up. Perfect. And now we want to do this with all the other scans. Any, any place you have some really good data, uh, something that's really clear, some good points that you can pick. Uh, you know, you don't have to be absolutely perfect. The software does a really good job of 
identifying those areas themselves and lining it up. So you don't have to be spot on. There are other ways that you can do it, other types of alignment, but I like to do the point to point because it is really the most precise that you have. So looks like we have everything aligned here. All right, looking good. All right, so do notice there are still a few other areas that maybe we did not get. We can go back into our eraser tool and maybe get some more of the ground really easy, really fast. And I kind of noticed there are some spikes in the little area under the wing. This just has to do with the position that I was at when I was doing the scanning. So if you think about it, it is just a laser. You, you have it at an angle where maybe the laser may just bounce off or there's just not enough uh, thickness or geometry there. Uh, we did only do this from one side because the guys were working on it. So one thing I want you to see here, this is, you can see the guy's shoe when he was working on it. Um, there are a couple of spikes here. So the spikes are very easily removed. Again, I go back to the laser part. Uh, it may just be where the laser kind of bounced off, but you can real easily, you use the lasso tool and you just kind of do a quick little circle or even a snip and you can see it actually highlights the entire spike. Um, so we're just going to go through just to uh, kind of clean it up a little bit more. Uh, you know, if you're going to be reverse engineering or uh, certain other processes, you know, this does help to kind of get you a little bit cleaner geometry. Um, you know, when I was scanning the tail, obviously I was doing this at ground level. So that may be where the laser kind of bounced off a little bit. Okay, and we don't have to get too detailed in here. Uh, other processes are going to constantly clean this up. Uh, for me, I like to have a pretty clean scan. All right, a couple other areas here. And obviously I was not able to get above it, but you know, I'm still leaving some stuff here. And you'll see it, it really doesn't make too much of a difference here. So now what I want to do is I want to do a global registration. Uh, what global registration does is that is basically going to take a look at everything together, all the different scans and kind of do a best fit. Uh, you'll see everything cleans up a little bit better. All right. And next step we're going to do is we're going to create our mesh. Uh, so there are a couple of different functions on here. I'm going to pick by radius for the uh, hole filling function. Basically, if there are any holes in the scan data, it's just going to clean it up. Uh, you see it said uh, 10, so that basically fills every hole up to uh, 10 millimeters. So now we're creating the fusion. I'm going to speed this up just a little bit uh, so you're not sitting here through the entire time. So now what the software is doing, it is create, taking those six separate scans. Uh, everything is basically just points in space right now. So what we're doing is I call it fancy connect the dots. So we are just creating that mesh. Uh, our tech calls their mesh a fusion. That's why you see it's a sharp fusion, smooth fusion, fast fusion. Those are other types that you're gonna use. Uh, with the ray, you're primarily just gonna be using the sharp fusion. Okay, so we are just about done creating the mesh. Uh, overall, this took about five minutes, so not too bad. Six scans of a full plane. Uh, let's look around, see how everything looks, see what the detail is. Um, you know, you can see that I did not get the wing. Let's look in here. Okay, the engine looks really good. With more setups, obviously, you'll get a lot more detail. Um, I was kind of on somewhat of a time limit here to what I, for how long I could scan. The wheel look, looks really nice here. Um, so what you'll see is, look at this uh, polygons. We have 5 million polygons in this uh, scan data. It's actually really not too bad. It'd probably be, obviously, a little under double that 
if we were going to go for the whole plane. So what I want to do is I want to decimate this, make it a little bit easier to work with. What's great is the software allows you to pick a specific uh, polygon count, if you like. So with this one, I'm going to drop it from 5 million polygons all the way down to uh, 750,000 polygons. And what we'll do is once this is done uh, with this process, we'll take a look and you can see how much of a loss of resolution you have. So obviously, anytime you decimate a file or drop down the uh, amount of polygons that you are going to be um, reducing, you are going to suffer a loss of resolution here. So let's see, this should be just about done. And then we will take a look at the two scans and see how much, if any, resolution we have really lost here. Okay, so we are done. All right, so now we're at 749,999 polygons. If you look at the two, let's zoom in because we have some really good detail here. Really does not look bad at all. You're still getting a lot of great detail. If we go back and forth here, I mean, you barely even notice that. Excellent. So what we want to do since we are done is we want to export our scan. And we're just going to click Export Mesh. Send it to where we want the file to be saved. I'm just going to click it under Plane, the final scan. Click as in, save it as an STL. Save, and we are all done. Fantastic.